Just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. What are those? Pokemon and AE Chief Editor of the Simple Game Reviews here. This time I'll review a classic RTS game from the late 2000s, which has been deemed as the last decent Command and Conquer game of the franchise. Does this game live up to that statement over a decade and a half after its release? Well, without further ado, let's find out. The Command & Conquer series revolutionized the real-time strategy or RTS genre in the same way that Doom revolutionized the first-person shooter or FPS subgenre. During the very early 90s, strategy games in general was planned, the majority of which were all turn-based similar to Sid Meier's Civilization series. In 1992, the first game that we would recognize as an RTS game, Dune 2 Building of a Dynasty, was released, developed by Westwood Studios. The title was attributed to be the grandfather of the RTS subgenre, as it has introduced the majority of the mechanics that is still used in RTS games that we play today. So Henry, next time you load into a multiplayer battle on Halo Wars 2, think of Gen 2. Obviously, Westwood was far from done with the franchise. Westwood took the foundations, mechanics and core gameplay of Gen 2 and took it to a more modern settings. The very first game of the Command & Conquer franchise, dubbed Tiberium Dawn in the USA, was released. Since then, the series had loads of highly successful entries, for example Red Alert 2 released in 2000 and Generals released in 2003. Fun fact for you guys, did you know that Command & Conquer Generals caught the attention of the various governments of the world? By the way guys, loot boxes were not involved in this. Due to the similarities between the events of the game and the impending Iraq war, the game had to be censored in Germany. They replaced units and buildings from the Global Liberation Army and replaced them with a more robotic faction. The games fared a lot worse in China due to the events of the Chinese campaign of the game, i.e. the nuclear bombing of the Forbidden City in Beijing and the intentional destruction of the Three Gorgeous Dam. The Chinese government outright banned the game. Anyway, back to the game at hand. This game was released on the 20th of March 2007 and it's set roughly 17 years after the event of Firestorm, the expansion pack to the game's predecessor Tiberian Sun. An unknown toxic element known as Tiberium has grown to be a considerable threat to the planet's ecosystem. As a result of this, the world's political borders and territories were segregated into zones which are classified by levels of contamination thanks to Tiberium. A massive disaster caused by Nod once again plunged both factions into a new global conflict. You play as a commander from either side of this conflict as you play through each faction's campaigns to resolve the Third Tiberium War. The Axis ability scores are as follows. To kick off proceedings, visibility give it 10. In the game setup screen, in skirmish and multiplayer battles, colors of each and every player can be customized. The campaign's color scheme is also very colorblind friendly. GDI units and buildings are in gold, Brotherhood of Nod units are represented in red, screen units are represented in purple. So a player with colorblindness will be able to differentiate who controls what unit or structure during campaign missions. A player with a visual impairment can play this game with no issues. Next up on ability, I scored a abysmally low zero. On the PC version, which was used to test it, there are no subtitle function whatsoever in both the base game and expansion. So this game is completely inaccessible for a player with hearing impairment. By the way guys, and we've also tested the Xbox 360 version, and no subtitle functions are available. Next up, mobility given 9. As part of the course for our most real-time strategy games out there, this game is primarily controlled by the mouse. Left click selects units, right click issues orders. So if you are familiar with the previous entries of the franchise, this game should be very familiar to you. On the console version, the control seems to be feeling a little clunky. You pull and hold the right trigger to expand the interface. You can then use the interface to construct buildings and train units. This interface may vary between the base game and its expansion pack. 
To be fair, when the console port of this game was released, RTS on console was in its infancy, so a player with a mobility impairment might want to go for the PC version. Gameplay Squad 10 This game retains the charm that the Command & Conquer franchise is famous for. The majority of the mechanics gameplay still has the unique style of pacing which the franchise is famous for. This is a perfect blend of style of classic gameplay mixing with new mechanics to make this game stand out from the crowd. For example, when a structure on the battlefield is garrisoned, each faction can use the abilities of various units to clear the enemy zenith in a single attack. In terms of lifespan, this game is extremely long. This game can be cleared in 23 and a half hours. The expansion pack adds another 8 hours to the playtime. However, in the official multiplayer servers were shut down by EA in 2014 due to the shutdown of the game spy network. However, you can still play online via multiplayer software, for example, Game Ranger and CNC.net. In the console version, you are by far worse off. The servers were shut down on 9th of November 2022. If you're hoping to play multiplayer with your friends on the Xbox version, you are fresh out of luck. In summary, Commander Cocker 3 Tiberium Wars is an excellent RTS experience both on console and on PC. With the multiplayer shut down on the Xbox 360 version, a key portion of the game has been removed, as you're reliant on the single player content. The expansion, King's Wrath on the other hand, has content exclusive to their own unique versions. The PC version has Global Conquest mode. Global Conquest is very similar to the Creative Assembly Total War series. You are presented with a campaign map which allows you to manage your armies and bases as you command one of the game's three factions, destroy your opponent and conquer the world with real-time battles thrown in the mix. In this mode, each faction has their own unique alternate victory conditions to keep the gameplay exciting. In the console version of Kane's Wrath, Kane's Challenge has a mini campaign which allows you to pick a faction and take on the various challenges as you prove your worth to the leader of the Brotherhood. Better still, this game is backwards compatible which allows you to enjoy both the base game and the expansion on your Xbox One or Xbox Series console. Also due to the game's age, it doesn't require a lot of firepower on your PC to run this game. So if you're an RTS enthusiast who's looking for a low spec friendly game to play over the Christmas period, this game is highly recommended. And the overall score is a fairly average 72.5%. This is Sponsor Commander 1990 Chief Editor of Disabled Game Review signing off, and I'll see you guys in the next review.